What's up everyone? I just finished flipping this house behind me here and at every property I've ever sold, I always put a mailbox similar to this on it and I've had a lot of success. So whether it's a mailbox or just the hot market, I still like to put these in as like a good luck charm. And today I'm gonna show you exactly how to build it. It's actually a very simple project. You have your mailbox obviously, which you can find on Amazon or Lowe's, Home Depot, wherever. Then you have your two by fours, which are, which are pressure treated. If you can find cedar ones, great. I can't, so I got pressure treated and they're cheaper that way anyways. After we stain it with cedar stain, you're not gonna be able to tell the difference of whether it's cedar or not. And then you have your actual cedar planks. And these are one by threes, I believe it is. So I got quite a few of these. I'm gonna start cutting them down and um, you'll see the final design when it's all done as far as the lengths. I will have all the measurements down in the description below. So even though you follow along with this video, reference that when you build it yourself. These are bougie. Those are mine. <laughs> You're not supposed to wear those. Now that you have your cuts, you can actually use one of your cuts as a template to keep drawing the rest and make sure it's just precise all the way down. So you can see my very last cuts here are actually gonna come up just short. So what I would recommend is to actually, instead of cutting your boards by 20 inches, I would do it like 19 and 7 eighths. And that way it takes into consideration the width of this blade that you're just cutting out of the wood. And that way you can still utilize your two last boards. Now these are pretty much gonna be wasted or used in a different project. Now I'm gonna be two slats short, but I might just raise up the mailbox or have a gap or widen my gaps in between each plank. We'll see how it comes out at the end. You already know because you saw the intro. Now that these are all cut and sanded down, I'm going to pre-drill my holes. I'm just gonna put one screw in each of these planks, but they are really beefy screws here. They're number 10s rather than your standard number eight screws. These are water resistant or exterior use uh, type of screw. So I'm gonna drill, pre-drill a hole here and the two by four is gonna be right in here. So I want this, actually, I'm going to use a template here because my screws are gonna be visible on this mailbox and I want them to all be in a line instead of kind of zigzagging. So I'm gonna mark exactly where half of a two by four would be, which is about three quarters. So I'm, I'm gonna write three quarters on here. That's gonna be my mark and then three quarters on every single board. So there's gonna be 18 or so of these type of things. Make sure it's centered here. What's half a three and a half is one and three quarters. So that's where my pre drill is gonna go. One and three quarters. Here you go. So pre drill. And then Tessa's gonna follow behind me with this and we countersink and that is so this rounded head here fits nicely and flush on this wood without splitting, especially since we're drilling on the end. If you don't pre-drill, this little wedge right here is going to split your wood, especially cedar wood. Got all of these done. They're all countersink, pre-drilled, and ready to start assembling on here. So your mailbox, the bottom of your mailbox needs to be 41 to 45 inches off of the ground. Now the bottom of your metal mailbox, right? Where the flap, the doors. So I'm going to start assembling these just kind of in the middle of my boards here, my legs that go into the ground. And then I'm gonna cut off the excess from the top and bottom later. That way I don't have to get super precise measurements right now. I'm gonna start just assembling this down low. So I have it measured from the bottom of the mailbox, 41 to 45 inches. So I'm gonna mark this and then just start assembling. Okay, so what I did here is, I'm, this is the top of my mailbox. I'm fastening this temporary brace on the top to keep my board straight 
as I go down. I'm gonna cut this excess off when I'm done building. All right, I got my temporary brace up top. So I'm gonna measure down and just go to an arbitrary, I'll start at 60 inches here, five feet. That means I have all this room over here for leg room to go into the actual ground, which is plenty. So I got five feet there. I'm gonna draw five feet over here. And now I have a reference point to put my boards over here. And again, the reason why I put that top brace over there is so that on this side, when I widen the boards, you can see how it goes in and out. I know I'm perfectly spaced out over there. So now I could bring these boards in here and I know everything in between is going to be evenly spaced width-wise. All right, I'm gonna put some glue here. Okay. Evenly spaced out. Okay, first one's done. I'm gonna do that nine more times on this side. Turn it around and do it again. Once all your slats are on there, you put your 24 inch slat up top and you can see it hangs out over the front. All right, now I have a two by four here, also pressure treated. You can cut off, off of one of your legs or something to get this. And this is actually gonna go behind this board here and it's what's going to connect these two pieces where the mailbox sits on top. So. I cut it, I can hammer it into place there, but first I'm gonna Craig jig some screw holes here to fasten it to each leg. If you don't have a Craig jig, that's okay. You can always just screw it in from your leg sides, but just know that the screws will be visible. Who cares, we have screws throughout this thing that are visible, but I'm just gonna Craig jig it to be a little bit extra. You can see they make exterior Craig jig screws. It's not just for interior furniture. And I also like to pre-drill them into my holes, just makes it easier to screw it in later. We're just gonna fasten on the one side for now so that way we can go ahead and stain the back of everything and then we'll come back and reassemble this, not reassemble, but start assembling the other side of it. And the reason we're doing it this way is because we have a babysitter. So we're trying to do as much as we can in one day. So then the second day is just really quick, assemble the back side and it'll all be done. I mean, getting started and assembling the one side is really the meat of this whole project. So. That's why we're doing it this way. Uh, just assembling one side and the other side later. We're gonna go ahead and start standing it right now. Smooth. Again, I'm just getting the backs of all of these before I, I assemble it. It's getting so cold I can't even talk. <laughs> uh, it doesn't need to be perfect on the back because you won't be able to really see it. You'll just be able to see the color difference. So that's why it's important to get a little bit on there. The other reason we're not screwing in the other side of this mailbox is because I need to access underneath this here to be able to screw in my mailbox top. Now there are screws on the bottom here, screw holes on your bottom here, 
but it's hard to get a drill to be able to drill down into the wood. So what we're gonna do is drill up, basically. There's a side flange here with all these screw holes. So we're gonna get a one by six. This is just some scrap deck board, but you can get a large cedar board, like a fence post or a fence picket thing. You can get plywood, whatever you want. A one by six in here. Now I'm gonna screw in into here. The mailbox will be fastened onto here. And then I'll be able to screw up from here into the piece of wood. So it'll all be connected. So I got this back piece drill, screwed on from underneath. Again, another reason why you don't finish this side yet. And then I have it level with this. So I'm gonna cut that off. And what this base allows for is one, two planks plus a cap on top with the correct spacing like I have here. Which for me, it's eight and a half inches for this board, which this is eight and a half inches to this line. Everything is pretty much assembled now, so I'm going to go ahead and install this in the ground here in the next few days. And once it's lower, because the legs will be, you know, a foot or two in the dirt, then I'll come back and cut this top two by four off right here. I could do it now, but it's pretty high. I'm gonna use a Sawzall. Where's the other one? Where's the number one? I, I, I just do, I tell you I do want it. Where is the number one, sweetie? I just, I just want it. Under here. You put it in there? Yeah. Oh. I tell you I do want it. She put the number one in between the slats and it fell down. Good job, Regan. I still need to finish staining these two top pieces.
that's all there is to building one of these things. Here's the guy I'm partnering with on this deal. I'll see you all in the next one. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Peace.